Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Combat Arena. This is a new title that is coming out from Games Workshop, and I believe it might be one of their exclusive games that they're only going to have in certain stores. Uh, but basically it is a, a combat game, arena combat game, where you have... Uh, four, up to four individuals uh, battling each other in a combat round, trying to knock everybody else out. Last person standing is the winner, uh, with some initiative thrown in there as well. So that's basically what this is. Let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works in a very general sense, and we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. The point of the game is to simply be the last person standing. This is a an arena combat game. This represents the arena. These are arc traps or arc snares, I believe is what they're called. Uh, so these are impassable areas. But every other uh, hex on the board is uh, something to that you can traverse. Now there are basically two phases for every round. The first phase is called the prepare phase, where the action cards will be shuffled everybody will get five cards and then the rest are simply put aside and they're not used for that round. Uh, then uh, we start flipping cards over for the initiative deck and once uh, a character's symbol comes up, then they are able to take out a, an action. Actions will be uh, denoted by the different cards that are in the action deck. Each card has three options that you can uh, choose from, and then you simply follow the rules for each action. Taking a breather simply moves your energy up two spaces over here on the energy track. Uh, a strike means you're going to be uh, attacking somebody who is within your kill zone, uh, and you're going to be rolling two dice to see how many wounds you're able to do. Uh, up here is usually movement and it gives you how many spaces you can do and then it also gives you the a type of facing that you have to have after you get done moving. So with this icon you can face any direction that you would like to after moving but with something like this uh, with a green arrow here you have to be facing directly away from the last hex that you left. Uh, so you basically have to stay moving in the same direction. So for example, with a card like this, I could move this person one, two, three, and then I have to be facing away from the last hex that I left. But with something like this, I could go one, two, three, and then face any direction that I would like to. I could be facing that direction, or I could face this direction. Whatever I'd like, it just determines uh, determined by that icon that's there. So as I said earlier, each round is split up into just two phases. The first phase is the prepare phase, and we've already actually done that, where each player is going to get uh, five action cards that they're going to be able to use during the course of this round. Stage two is the fight phase, where a card will be flipped over, and whoever's symbol shows up first is able to go. And then once they are finished with that action, another card is flipped over to see who is able to go next, and so forth and so on, until all of the cards in this deck have gone through, and then another round is begun with uh, cards being shuffled back into or out of the uh, initiative deck based upon where their tokens are on the energy field over here. All cards are returned to the action deck, it's shuffled, and then five more cards are given to each player to start the next round. So the first action here belongs to X101 over here, so he will take his hand of cards and take a look to see what he would like to do. After perusing the decks, the, the cards that are in his hand, he's going to elect to play this card here as his action and choose to take a breather. Now, all this simply does is it moves his energy marker up two spaces, one, two. So now he's still only putting in three initiative cards, but if he gets any more, he'll be able to have an another initiative card. Plus, it allows him to see what everybody else is going to be doing here before he makes any other actions. Another initiative card is then drawn. Naim Shai Murad's turn has come up, so she takes a look at her hand and sees what she would like to do. After looking through her hand of possibilities, she's going to choose to play a charge action, which allows her to move three, but then she has to be facing directly away from the, la the last hex she leaves. So as she begins to move, she's going to go ahead and go one, two, three, 
and she's facing directly away from the last hex that she left, so she's good to go there. And now, the charge card here, normally you can only do a move or an attack, or you can do whatever's down here in the bottom. The charge move, though, it says after moving, you can reveal another card, resolve its attack action, and then discard it. So after her charge, if she has somebody in her kill zone, which she does because she has two hexes away to have her kill zone, she can play another attack card. So she's going to do a strong attack that allows her to roll three dice. Now her abilities here are listed on the character sheet. So for example, her kill zone is right here. And if she's using this attack ranged, which she's going to, she has to look at the shade of the hexes. And the dark shade will say that she needs to roll a 4+, plus, and each uh, successful attack will score 2 wounds. The light blue will also score uh, 2 wounds, but it takes a uh, 5 plus to hit. So she's going to use this attack action and have to roll with these characteristics. So she, in order to hit, she has to roll four pluses. So she takes her dice and rolls them. And she has two sixes and a two. So that means that that is two hits. And each hit is going to cause two wounds. So that's four wounds that X101 will have to suffer. So X101 here is going to have to take four points of damage. Unless he has some type of defensive card in his hand. He does, but he's going to save it for later. Four hits is not that strong of an attack, so he simply takes his health marker and moves it one, two, three, four down. On Godfrey's turn, uh, another initiative card is drawn and it becomes Godfrey. He's going to just simply take a swift step and move forward, and he's able to change his direction if he would like to, but he doesn't have to. He's just going to stay in that direction, and that's the end of his turn. Another initiative card is drawn, and Gottfried moves another step closer uh, to Daedalosis. Again, cautiously awaiting uh, to see what Daedalosis is going to do. Another initiative card is drawn, and Daedalosis is uh, now going to be able to attack. And even though Gottfried has been very cautious, uh, Daedalus does have range, and so the, uh, he is going to make a mighty strike against Daedalosis. Now, uh, I'm sorry, against Gottfried. Now, if you look at uh, Daedalosis's sheet here, he has a rather extensive ranged attack here, which Gottfried does fall within the light blue area here. So again, as before, you look at the different colors of the uh, hex, and that determines what you have to roll. In this particular case, Daedalosis is going to have to roll five pluses to hit. So fives and sixes will score hits, and each hit will do two wounds each. So Daedalosis will roll his four dice, looking for fives and sixes. And so he only scored one hit, which does two damage uh, to Gottfried, and Gottfried's just going to go ahead and take it and move his health marker down two. Now, as I said before, the point of the game is to be the last person standing. So as the game continues to go on, you're going to be using, losing more and more damage unless fortune is shining upon you. Uh, so as you take more damage, you're going to be getting more of these wound tokens that are like this right here. So let's say that on a future turn, X101 actually takes six damage and he doesn't have any way to block it or anything like that. No special abilities will help him out. He will have to move one, two, three down to the last spot. And once he does that, he'll add a wound marker to the top of his track. And then he continues. He's counted one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's where he will actually end up. Once a wound marker comes out here, it no longer becomes a part of his track. Uh, now, once you do that, you have to draw a wound card, which will have something like this. And this simply says that you move your energy token up two spaces, then you discard this card. So there's a little bit of an adrenaline surge going on. 
but it may be something like staggered where you can move your energy token up once but then the player uh, to your left can move your fighter uh, one hex in any direction and choose your facing they cannot force you to move uh, into an arc snare however then you discard that card so there's a number of different things that you can do here uh, a damaging hit will cause more damage uh, it could stun you which means that you can't attack on your next turn uh, stay down uh, there are also uh, ones like headshots where um, the person will look to see how many wound markers you have on your sheet already and then they'll roll that many dice to see uh, if uh, you take a headshot if you roll a six you're automatically knocked out of the game once someone is completely knocked out they are not out of the game they will simply take their sheet and flip it over and when their initiative card is drawn uh, they will simply roll a d6 and then carry out whatever that result says for them to do one of the possibilities being vengeance as you can see right here where you will come back onto the board wherever you would like make a uh, coup de gras attack and then you'll be removed from the board again so uh it is a character elimination or a player elimination game but you're not completely out of the game until uh, uh it is all said and done and that's basically how you play combat arena So that's about that for Combat Arena. Now, uh, I will say off the bat that the models in here are the easy to put together, snap fit kind of models. Uh, I, I glued them, but you don't have to. Uh, the cool thing about this is that there are only, uh, I think five models in the game and they each go together in about a minute or two. And that includes clipping them off the sprues. So this is not a difficult game to put together. You should be good to go in a, in, uh, less than 10 minutes as far as being able to play the game. You'll of course have to learn the rules and all that kind of stuff, but hopefully this will help you a little bit down that path. Now, with all that being said, uh, this is definitely on the lighter, and I mean like paperweight lighter side of the stuff that Games Workshop puts out. Uh, it's definitely for a more family-oriented market. This is something like a first step into models and games that use models and putting together models and all of that kind of stuff. And that's pretty much the focus I think that this game is taking. So you do need to kind of realize all of that. Um, I mentioned earlier that I believe this is on a limited distribution model so uh, it's only going to show up in certain stores you may not be able to get it where you are all of this kind of stuff goes into it so uh, I think um, with all that having been said we can go ahead and get into my pros and cons so my first pro of the game is uh, the fact that the models are uh, GW quality and of course that usually goes without saying but I also like the fact that they are the easy to put together models uh, so that is a good thing because this is an entry-level game this is not something that uh, a, a seasoned Warhammer or Games Workshop veteran is going to be necessarily searching for unless they have somebody that they're trying to introduce to the modeling hobby and so forth so I, I like the fact that they do have this entry-level vibe going on with a lot of the games that they're putting out especially with this limited distribution model you know Barnes & Noble only or uh, you know that type of thing my second pro of the game is that it does play very simply it is easy to teach and it's easy to play there is not a lot of rules to this game it is very simple and most of the things that you have to remember are right in front of you on top of your uh, you know, on your player aid sheet or your player card that you have in front of you. All of the uh, uh, values that you have to roll to hit, how much, how many wounds each hit is going to do, uh, a special ability that you can always fire off, a special ability that you can uh, fire off if you want to discard a couple of cards. All of that is right in front of you. You do not have to uh, reference the rules hardly at all. There's very few icons in the game, so you don't have to constantly go back to see what, it, what an icon is doing. Furthermore, the icons were designed in such a way that they are intuitive. Well, what they are showing you is basically what it allows you to do. So everything about this game is simple. Everything about this game is light. And simple and light is good, is a great combination for the market that this is headed towards, uh, which is a gateway into 
uh, the tabletop miniature gaming world. A third pro of the game for me is that it isn't actually player elimination. It is because you, once you're out, you are now that much closer to the game being over uh, because that's one less person in the game. But it isn't character elim or player elimination because you still get to do something. Now, on top of that, the reason this is a pro is that the thing that you get to do is usually very fast. It doesn't take a whole lot of time at all, so it doesn't uh, slog the game down uh, at all, that extra thing that you can do. Uh, so that's a cool thing. I like the fact that they realize that player elimination is not really uh, a, a mechanism that is endeared by many. Uh, and so they've allowed it to be something that uh, allows you to continue interacting in the game, but it, it also cuts down on the amount of time that your specific turn will take. Now, with all of those pros out of the way, we do need to have uh, a little bit of time to address a couple of cons. Um, uh, the first con of the game for me, and this is the biggest one, is that I think it overstays its welcome and the 30 to 45 minute time frame that's on the box, I think is not true. Uh, and part of the reason why is because the more damage you take, the weaker your character is becoming. And I know that's thematic, but at the same time, that means it's also going to take you longer to do more damage to your opponents, and they're also going to take longer to do uh, more damage to you, which slows the game down considerably. The longer the game goes, the more wounds you've taken, the less effective you are. Now, once you get a lot of wounds, your hit points are ticking away pretty quickly. So I'm, I don't want you to think like this is an incredible thing. But what should take 30 to 45 minutes in both times that I've played has taken about an hour and a half. Now, both of those games have been teaching games. So there is some leeway and leniency there for time, but it feels like it overstays its welcome. And that's the con. Uh, it goes longer than I think it should. And part of the reason that it goes longer than it should, I think, is because the more wounds you take, the weaker you are, the less damage you're doing. I would much rather have something like if you're shooting a pistol at somebody that's across the a combat arena, how many wounds you've taken is not going to change how much damage that pistol is doing. But it does. Now, the reason it does, and I know this is probably part of the process here, is that the number that you have to roll in order to score a hit has gone up. Which makes sense. The more wounded you are, the less accurate your shooting is going to be and so forth. You're not going to be as savvy on your, your battle moves and all that kind of stuff. I get it but it slows the game down and that's a bad thing. So that's about that. I'm gonna give Combat Arena a six out of 10. And the reason it's not lower than that is because I did enjoy the game. I had a great time playing it. I liked the fact uh, that you're not actually eliminated from the game, even though you are. You can always roll that die and, and do something on your turn. You can even come back and try to take somebody out uh, after you have already been taken out yourself. So I like how this game comes at some of the things that it does that might be archaic because player elimination is a little bit of an archaic mechanism in my opinion at least uh and and really shouldn't be employed this one they said it's a combat arena game we have to kind of use player elimination but hey let's switch it up a little bit and give something some something to do to those people when they get knocked out so they aren't actually eliminated from the game if i want to play something like combat arena I'm going to pull out Shadespire or Night Vault or Dreadfane or uh, something to that effect, uh, especially if I want the, the miniatures uh, are the same quality and the gameplay is so much more um, uh, valuable, I guess you could say. With that having been said, um, a 6 out of 10 is about the best that I can do. It is good for what it is, I think. It's a good gateway game, but... Sadly, I, I think you'll probably be bored with it after a few plays and then want to move on to something else. So that's it for Combat Arena. Six out of ten. Thank you for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. 
If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.